Well, g'day, flatties and reality defenders. This is Critical Thing from Down Under. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Very kind. So today we're going to document a little test run I did uh, in preparation for the final experiment. Now I'm going to be doing the uh, weight change versus latitude experiment and uh, just trying to get everything pretty much spot on so that uh, I will avoid any hiccups if possible. Now in July and August I took a trip over to Thailand uh, for a few weeks there and I took a set of scales with me to make some measurements along the way and make some measurements while I'm in Thailand and uh, you can see on the map here so there's some um, measurement at Redcliffe and then Melbourne there and then uh, some measurements up in Thailand now we'll zoom into Google Earth to see those in more detail right so yeah Redcliffe flew to uh, Melbourne was able to do a measurement at the airport there and then we'll go around the globe to Thailand and land in uh, Suvana Boom Airport in Bangkok uh, stay in Khon Kaen, did some travelling up to the north uh, right on the Myanmar border there in uh, northern Thailand and I took all these measurements and then measurements on the way back now I just took pictures this time because you know, uh, flat earthers have a habit of um, saying that we're lying about these things, but I did this experiment. These are the pictures to prove it. Um, I get a lot of criticism from flat earthers and, and other people about doing the experiment and I should do this and I should do that and I don't know how digital scales work and, and did you take into account this, that, that and the other and, and all of these people don't do the experiment themselves. So um, <clears throat> here's my doing of the experiment and uh, I, I uh, know what I'm doing with this and uh, here's the pictures to prove that I've done it at least and you know if you want to criticize go ahead do the experiment be my guest and here we go into fly into Melbourne and uh, this is actually the predicted weight just prior to flying to Melbourne I did email a flat earth friend of mine and said uh, in Melbourne, I expect 1,000.84, and uh, there we go. Very lucky with that. The scale was spot on. Now, arrive at Suvina Boom in Bangkok. Now, we uh, flew into the satellite terminal there, and there's a, an underground railway that brings you over to the main terminal for processing, and that's that there. And then my prediction again is spot on for Bangkok. Uh, I found a little spot in the terminal up in the uh, departure hall and uh, I got that measurement now there is an explanation on the globe as to what this measurement why it varies and there are calculations that can be done that will predict exactly what the measurement will be uh, within the error of the scales and, and other miscellaneous uh, errors that can creep in and uh, so the flat earth has no explanation for these variations but the globe earth you can predict a weight and then go to a place and measure it and it will be very close to that prediction so that is how we are fairly sure that the earth is a rotating spheroid so there in Konken there's one of my favorite cafes you're going to make sure to follow that rule when you're there and uh it's a measurement at uh, Konken and then uh, we took a trip in Chiang Mai and uh, we stayed at this uh, nice modern hotel there and they have the coffee machine but there's a little trouble with the English there perhaps you might like some warm lick with your cappuccino or black cough I don't know and now this reading um, it's a little bit lower than what I expected but it's still probably uh, it's within you know reasonable error but this was a little bit lower than what I uh, would have expected but it's still different 
Then we, this temple we uh, travelled to on the border of Myanmar and uh, Wat Pura Prom Panyo or something like that. And uh, there's this, uh, these temples are absolutely glorious. And uh, there in the floor is a compartment with some more stuff in it. And I was out the front of that particular temple that take, took my measurement. And uh, there we, it was sort of almost indoors. And during that time that we were there, there was a, uh, a holy day in, in the Buddhist religion. And a lot of the locals were there at the temple and uh, engaging in the activities of the day. Then we moved, went to another temple down the mountain. There's another temple where, again, they were having uh, Buddhist celebrations. Now, difficult to find an indoor location here, so uh, I had to do the measurements on the, the steps of uh, that uh, little statue there. Well, not so little. And um, I hate doing measurements out in the open, but there I did this one. I never expect them to be 100% spot on when they're out in the open. As it turns out, that one was reasonable. This is the same place. Wat Pa Tara Piram or something like this. And there, uh, in this special day, they were all the locals were there helping to construct another statue in the grounds of the temple. On the way back to Chiang Mai, we popped into this cafe, the Air Diamond Cafe. They've got an, an, an aeroplane there and they've turned it into a cafe. Very interesting. And that's what it looks inside. The uh, aeroplane cafe, a Black Canyon cafe inside. Now back at the hotel. Uh, I think this was at the hotel. I can't remember, but man, oh man, that was so oh, wow, steak and vegetables. Oh yeah, that was, that was pretty delicious, that was. Uh, anyway, I digress. <laughs> and uh, this time uh, in the hotel, again, I got a, a slightly better reading, more like what I was expected from uh, the hotel. And then back in Konken, this is, we start to, when on the journey home, I start to do some measurements again. And I, I put these as shorts on uh, YouTube. And these are the numbers I got in Kon Ken. And then I found a spot in Suvana Boom Airport that was uh, not so crowded. A uh, little bit difficult to do. And then another, another short. I recorded the reading there. And then in Melbourne. Uh, so a little bit higher than what I got last time. So last... The first with the time when I went over it was 1000.84 and then we got 1000.88 a little bit higher than what I would like but still within the bounds of reasonable error and there's my location that'll be the uh, that'll be the hungry jacks at the uh, terminal there then I did a calibration check, uh, get back to Redcliffe and uh, I put this as a short. Uh, it was a little bit higher than when I started, uh, 0 0.03 grams higher, which is within the bounds of error again. But I like to see no error, but it, nothing's perfect really. I know Flat Earth is expected to be perfect, but reality is never perfect. And... Uh, since then I've checked the calibration and it's it does measure 1000.01 uh, but anyway that doesn't matter that's that's perfectly acceptable that number considering it's so much different from the other numbers and uh, here we go again I put my results into the spreadsheet now I've done it into two sections they travel to and travel from this is probably the most accurate measurement that I have performed in all the times that I've been doing this. So this is, the red line is what we would predict based on the WGS84 model. And I do realize that the difference in height is a little bit tricky 
because I don't have the exact science for it. I'm using an approximation to uh, work out what the difference in height does. It's a pretty good approximation, but I don't think it's spot on. But as you can see now, it still gives a pretty good indication because right here we have two different heights and the measurements follow that pretty closely and certainly when we're near sea level uh, lower 200 meters or or below elevation i've got spot on measurements there and and on the journey back spot on measurements spot on to the prediction what's the flat earth prediction a kilogram should weigh a kilogram everywhere on the flat earth but the kilogram mass will weigh different on the globe and this is directly related to the parameters of rotation and oblateness now you can't derive this you can't make up an equation and 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 hope it works for the globe this equation i made up myself i've worked out this what the weight should be from first principles from using centrifugal force from using the equations for gravity and centripetal force there's that's how i calculated it. nobody gave me the formula right i calculated this based on if the earth were a globe if it was a blade if it was spinning now we've modeled it with the wgs84 so then I've taken that into account, taken the spin into account, and uh, these are the predictions I've come up with, and the actual measurements match the predictions. You can't get it much better than that. I mean, flatties, what do you want? So here is my analysis of the data. I just went some mathematical analysis, and um, this, the WGS model explains... 99.9% of the variation which is enormously significant from a statistical point of view as a matter of contrast the flat earth model explains 0% of the variation that we experience by real world measurement so now I've got this other graphing where I eliminate height as a variable so I can I uh, normalize the measurements to be as if they were taken at the same height so that I can plot it on this graph and see how it fits and it fits the uh, rotating uh, spheroid WGS 84 model there's the Melbourne measurement there's the Redcliffe measurement and these the Thailand measurements fits very well and, um, as you can see the flat earth would be this line here and it doesn't fit very well that and it doesn't fit the non-rotating stationary spheroid either so this is evidence that we are rotating because we can make measurements to determine that the rotation is there you know that's the causal one of the causal factors uh, you can make a reasonable reasonable inference that the rotation is there because we can measure what the rotation predicts now I've conglomerated all my measurements uh, combined them along with other people's measurements and you see it's nicely clustered around the uh, rotating uh, spheroid uh, model which is a very very powerful evidence and as I've shown before with statistical analysis the chances are that this is all just a mistake and by accident is a, a zero point something with more than 20 zeros after it and a one there's the chances of that being an accident so uh, this is pretty powerful and great evidence that yes we live on a globe and yes it's rotating and uh, when we go to Punta Arenas we're expecting uh, a number in this area and at Union Glacier, Glacier we're expecting a number in this area. So the donations are still open to support me on my trip to Union Glacier. 
Uh, thanks to everybody who's uh, donated already. That's fantastic. And donations are gratefully accepted. And I'll put the link in the description. Now, no weight versus latitude uh, video would be complete without this particular clip. So I hope you enjoy it again. I know I will. It goes on about the difference in uh, the weight of things at the equator compared to other places in the Earth. Have you actually gone and measured it? Have yes. you ever done it? We yes. understand that in the model, based on the spin and centrifugals, <coughs> centripetal, centripetal, whatever forces, that that's the result that you can calculate based on your model. Yes, we did. But can has anyone has anyone actually gone and measured this so-called difference? Has anyone actually measured that a kilogram weighed in the you know somewhere up north is any different to a kilogram weighed on the equator? Yep. We've done has that. anyone actually gone and done that? Yep. No, they have not. Oh, no. A kilogram is a kilogram wherever you are on the earth. But we've done it. You're wrong. You're wrong about that. When are you going to acknowledge that you're wrong about that? Yes, what you say is true, a kilogram mass is a kilogram mass anywhere on this earth, but it doesn't weigh the same with the scale that it has only been calibrated once. It doesn't weigh the same. And yes, we've done the calculations. And yes, we've done the measurements. Yes. So... When are you going to acknowledge that and apologise for putting out this misinformation? Hmm? When are you going to do that? Eh, well, thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.